Hallelujah. I welcome you to this prayer service in case you're here for the first time. I'd like you to know that you are here because you wanted to be here. God orchestrated your, your steps to this place and your life will not remain the same in Jesus' precious name. This is one service that I don't really preach. I just give directions and your life will not remain the same as you listen and receive the, the prophetic direction to your life in the name of Jesus. I want to read John, the first chapter. I know you're standing. We're going to read from verse 46. I'll read 46. You read 47. I read 48. You read 49 till we get to verse 51. There's a narrative about Nathaniel when Jesus Christ was choosing his disciples. He found a disciple, Philip, and Philip went to call a man called Nathaniel. In verse 46, and Nathaniel said to him, can anything good come out of Nazareth? And Philip said to him, come and see. Verse 47, read. Nathanael said to him, how do you know me? Jesus answered and said to him, before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. So that revelation attracted Jesus to him. Oh, this month is going to be interesting. Jesus answered and said to him, because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree. Do you believe? You will see greater things than this. Next verse, ready? Read. I say to you, hereafter you will see him. Say to three people, say, very soon, you will see the heaven open. Find three people, tell them, very soon. And today is the day, you will see heavens open. Be seated, God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. I greet everyone across all the churches that we have. I know that your life will remain the same in Jesus' name. As you travel through scriptures, you meet people, meet communities. You even see pastors, prophets. You see people that had dealings with God before. That the Bible shows to us how that their heavens are closed. And they begin to struggle. The Bible says about something that he went out one day. And he wanted to shake himself like he used to shake himself. And he did not know that the power of God had eluded him. We see people in the Bible that either operated with closed heaven from the beginning. And suddenly they encountered God and began to see new things happen in their lives. Or people that started with open heaven experience and suddenly it shot over their lives. As a pastor... I've been pastoring full-time for 25 years. I've seen many people. By the nature of our job, people open up. You see people that look well-dressed. And when you shut the door of your face and they say, Pastor, can I confide in you? And they tell you things. You just shake your head. If you thought your problem was 20% before, and you are planning to be depressed. And you think you are thinking God has not been good to you. You realize that your problem is just 1% of what some people go through. There are many people, many Christians that operate with short heavens. Now, if you don't understand what I understand right now, you will think it's not possible for someone to have Christ for someone to be a member of this church and operate in closed heavens, I can tell you it's possible. And many people are dealing with it. That you're a pastor does not exempt you from it. That you've been a Christian for a long time does not exempt you from it. 
That's why you have to do a forensic investigation about your life, even this month. But I believe strongly because God will never bring anything to you. He will never expose you to anything he doesn't want to bring you into. I pray in the name of Jesus that today become the first day of the rest of your life. Yeah. I thought that man would be louder. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. When things are dry consistently, I'm not talking about things being dry for a while. Consistently. When you hear things like promise and fail. When you hear things like near success syndrome. <laughs> is a pointer to the fact that people are operating under closed heaven. It's not God's will. There are many people operating outside, God, outside of God's will. There are many situations and circumstances that God didn't plan that people will put themselves into. The Bible says Christ has set us free. Christ did not die for the church, he died for the whole world. The reason you see some people under bondage, that's by the fact that they come to church. They're living under the provisions of God. The reason people, uh, the, the, the worship leader has to stir you up to worship God. You were made for worship. The reason you, you, you study the word and it's time to sleep. Your Bibles are gone together because when you sleep, you release saliva. The sleep is deep when it comes to the word of God. It's good to praise God, but they see you dance during praise. Say, so I just want to go to that church to dance. When the word comes, revelation of who you are, of what belongs to you. In a noisy family, when they're reading inheritance or will, everybody's quiet. You want to hear your portion. But when you see that you, is, is, preaching time is the time where you, where you want to talk, you want to sleep, you want to go out. Could it be that there's something doing you? <laughs> if you're in Africa, you understand what I'm saying. Maybe because the devil, when he does you, he attaches things that will make you never come out, to come out of the hole he has placed that person. But this morning, in the name of Jesus, you are coming out. Amen. Your worldview will change. Amen. Before you thought, oh, I can do this because I have money. I can do this because I'm educated. I always say this and I want to say it again. Do you think the devil will teach you in school? As much as you have a degree more than thermometer, do you think the devil will teach you how to defeat him? Thank God for the school you went to. But there's, a, there's something called epinosis, a higher knowledge that is higher than all you've learned in your life. That is why we have to sit down and learn. There's a professor in a school in Nigeria. He was about to sleep around 10.30 at night because he had early morning lectures. And something told him to go to the BQ and go and meet the house girl. House girl that they've been treating of crocro and chicken pox and uh, whatever, eczema and whatever, because she just, she just came from the village. When he entered the house girl's room at the BQ, met the house girl the way she was sleeping, it was something else. And the man just pounced on that girl. Didn't know what came upon him, according to him. At that same time, Something woke the wife up. And the wife was like, where is my husband? And something told the wife to go to the BQ. When she saw the wife, and when she saw the husband in the BQ, he was busy, sweating. Out of amazement, she shouted. And you know what happened? They were living in the university quarters. The neighbors came to rescue her. And they found the professor. And the, she, she was just too astonished. She said it. My husband is my husband. You know what happened? They expelled that man. I don't know whether he has a job somewhere now. But the, the last time I knew about it, he had no job. The devil is not playing. 
When he says it comes to, when the Bible says it comes to steal, it comes to steal, and to kill and to destroy, he's not talking about your share that was missing. It comes to steal destiny. There are lots of people operating under closed heaven. You would have thought a whole professor will hearken to the voice of the devil. Now you are a professor or a doctor in the physical, does not mean you are a doctor in the spiritual. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, the voice of the stranger you never, never follow. You will not hack into the voice of your adversaries. Every command of the enemy concerning you is over today in the name of Jesus. The voice of no is the voice you will hear. You will say no to ungodliness. You will say no to addictions. In the name of Jesus. A lot of people label like elephant and the prophet like an ant. And you're wondering, they move from prayer meeting to prayer meeting. Even when they have something, it doesn't last. And you're wondering, maybe I should change town. Maybe I should change location. Maybe I should change church. Maybe I should change my pastor. Well, it's possible that can happen. But many times, the problem is not with other people, it's with you. You remember I told you about Seneca's slave? In the Grecian mythology, the slave woke up one day and said the house was dark. And Seneca said to the slave, the house is not dark. Later they discovered that the, the slave was blinded in his eyes. Anybody that is blinded, anybody that is not seeing right, this service in the name of Jesus, the Lord arrests every unusual development, every evil happenings, the Lord arrests it. In the name of Jesus. Amen. If you allow me, I will go deeper. In Psalm 68 verse 6, Psalm 68 verse 6, the Bible says God sets the solitary in families. It brings out those who are bound into prosperity. <laughs> he said the solitary in families. Now it seems to me like God was talking about a particular location. Out of the people that are there, he said the solitary in families. Maybe you're here. When you were being born, your, your mother died. Your father said, we're not expecting you. It's possible both of them were not expecting you. Or maybe when you were born, there was a divorce. No father, no mother. You're just, when you see people, when you see other people with their parents, you think, God, what have I done? What you didn't cause cannot stop your life. There's a way out. Today, in the name of Jesus, God will make a way for you. Everything, your background, I want to put your back on the ground, is dealt with by the anointing this morning. He sets, God sets the solitary in families. Actually, the word family means a house. Searching a house. That's why don't exempt yourself as a child of God. If God sets you in a church, don't say, I just want to do my thing and go away. No. That foundation, that habit, that attitude, that you came to church with, God didn't give it to you. Change is something you must be committed to. If you so change, you will see change. Where I came from naturally said, if you do what you've not done before, you will see what you've not seen before. I pray that this month, you will see what you've never seen before. In the name of Jesus. God said the solitary families, he brings out those who are bound into prosperity. But, while he's doing that, he puts the rebellious in dry land. Two things happening to two different people. Two different things happen to, happening to two people in the same place. One is rebellious. He puts him in a dry, patched land. Have you seen a patched land before? When we just started at Dubai Church, I used to fly to Dubai every week. And I, we used to fly over a dry patch land between Ethiopia and Dubai. And you'll see desert for hours, even on the plane, for at least two hours. I, I, I used to look down and see patch land. And I will remember this Psalm 68 verse 8. I can imagine if God threw someone in a dry land. If someone is dwelling in a dry patch land like that, you know what will happen? Anything you planted will not grow. Everything, it will be like you don't know how to do it. 
Your training in school. People you trained will have results. You will not have results. I pray in the name of Jesus. You will not dwell in a dry land. You will not dwell in a dry land. In the name of Jesus. This service conquers every confusion in your life. Your experience will be different. If you believe it, shout hallelujah. If your amen is not resounding, I understand that you don't understand what I'm sharing. This is, this is so powerful that it affected me. I came to church with a burden. In Deuteronomy 28, if you read verse 23, I'm going to read 23 and 24. The Bible says, your heaven, which are over your head, not general one. So it's possible you and the, your neighbor have different heavens. Today, I'm not going to look at what you're putting on or the facade you want people to see. <laughs> I am looking forensically into what you're dealing with. There are people that cried before the service and they came to church smiling. You put on a facade. There are things in your life you're wondering, why did I have to go through this? And you give your life thinking it will end. That is what we want to deal with throughout this month to tell you the devil is a stubborn spirit when it comes in contact with a rebellious Christian. As you obey God's word in the name of Jesus, God's word will be true in your life. Amen. Can I have a resounding amen? amen? If you know that God's word will be true in your life, shout amen somebody. Amen. And your heavens which are over your head. Read the King James when you get home. I don't want to read it. It sounds like incantation. Shall be bronze. Even if it was raining. Over you. Dryness. The rain will fall where the bronze ends. There are people like that. Oh. People in bondage will say, oh no, Pastor Bearden, that's the Old Testament. Follow me this morning. Follow me. The earth under you shall be iron. Ah. So, no rain, you till. Have you ever walked on a land? <laughs> when I was, I think, 1987, 88, we had a farm. My mom made sure every Saturday we went to the farm. University of Bellary gave the staff land to farm because there was austerity in Nigeria at the time. I loved going to the farm because it was an opportunity for me to drive. And when it wasn't rainy season, very hard to make ridges. Very hard. You have blisters because the hole is hitting a dry land. That's how some people are. Even those in ministry, they are working hard. You see them, they're working hard, but little results. If you belong to a church like this, it's very hard to belong and be actively involved with churches where they are operating under close heavens. They will make you give many programs, little results. You do evangelism, evangelism, no results. You saw first timers right now? Easy. Some of you have not gone to do any soul winning. Easy. It comes easy. But some people struggle, it doesn't work. I remember being in a place with someone when the Lord just sent us to this place. And I asked, I said, how is church here? I said, well, pastor, church is good. I've spent three years here, we're at 200. I ran out of the conversation because I didn't want him to sow that in my spirit. And he said to me, midweek service, people don't come in Abuja because they, most people don't live in the town. They live in the satellite towns. So they don't want to attend midweek service. If you watch our midweek services right now, it's like Sunday service. Are you following what I'm saying? It's been like that for a long time. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, anyone that is encountering dryness in their lives, in your marriage, in your business, today, particularly this month, your experiences shall be different. Your experiences shall be different. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says the Lord will change the rain of your land 
to powder. My God. And dust. That will not be your portion. From the heaven, it shall come down on you until that person, not you, is destroyed. I read the message translation. It said the sky over your head <laughs> will become iron roof. That will not be your portion. Amen. The ground under your feet is slab of concrete. Ah! You are sowing on concrete. The thing will die. So when they are teaching you, be strong, believe in yourself. You've seen people that wanted to commit suicide. You know why someone wants to end his life? He's tried. Right. That's why I tell you, I, I'm sure some of you don't believe me, the antidote to suicidal thought and all those things is not the counselor. If some of those counselors will, will tell you the truth, oh, there's a couple that had a problem in Koza. So the wife insisted, if you want this marriage to continue, we have to go and see a counselor. <laughs> According to the husband, he told people in family processing unit, not me. He said, when they got to the counselor, the things the counselor said were the things the wife had been saying. So he went to the wife's home and found out the wife had been following these things. They are demonically orchestrated things. They didn't start marriage. They can't understand marriage. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, I don't know where to face. Yes, now, if you don't believe in what I'm saying, you will believe later. After you've done all and all have failed, you'll come back to God. Some of you are not following God's design and you want to see God's results. If your cake looks like theirs, if your recipe looks like theirs, your cake will end up like theirs. For those of you that sit on the internet and design your marriage, design your kids based on those things, you say, I need a counselor. I'm not saying, I mean, my, my, I have someone close to me that I encourage to read these things, psychology and all those things. I believe in them. But nothing can replace God. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. It's just that some of you will not have integrity enough to come and say, Pastor, you're all right. Because you discover. You will discover. Even in hospitals, I don't know about now, they said we try, we help, God heals. I'm not saying they can help. But outside God, it will work. Nothing will work. Particularly if you're a Christian, you'll be mad, you'll be upon your body the mark of Christ. You're not part of them. They will never accept you. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, anybody here, because there are inherited closed heavens, anybody here operating under closed heaven, in the name of Jesus, you are walking out of this place free. Somebody said, when? So, so why did you receive Christ? If we will experience what people experience, that's why, that's where covenant comes in place. What you do, how you do it, we determine what you get. That's why you can't say, I'm just a Christian. Just having BA behind your name, born again. <laughs> you have to do something. I've never seen a car move when the driver didn't engage it in the gear. You have to engage. When you know these things, blessed are you. Not when you know them, when you do them. I pray in the name of Jesus, this service this morning will change your life totally. Amen. Will give you new experience totally. In the name of Jesus, the message says, the sky over your head will become an iron roof and under your feet a slab of concrete. From out of the skies, God will rain ash and dust on you until you suffocate. That will not be your story. Amen. I said that will not be your story. Amen. Somebody say your heaven. Say your head. Say your heaven. Say your head, your heaven, your head is not a general one. Please cut this concept. I wish God would say, or God said, I will open the heavens for everybody. No. The heaven can be opened to someone, in fact, to a city. And the next city, there will be problems. 
I've told this story before. When we, in case you are jumping on this place and you, you feel like there's a wood on that, we, we bought a suspended floor. To suspend the floor here from the concrete. So don't think the concrete is shaking. It's suspended. We bought from Europe what they used to deck in the ship. It's very expensive. When we wanted to do the slab, 12 uh, centimeter high, they said we must do it once. So we engaged some company to supply the concrete to do it once. But they told me, Pastor, if it rains, there will be a problem. It must all rain. And we didn't have money. Rain started after doing the concrete. My God. Rain, rain got to Gilmore Junction. I knelt down. I said, Father, you know I don't have money. If it rains here, do you know that it rained at Gilmore Junction? It did not rain here. Oh, you don't believe. You remember when we wanted to start Maraba Church? We had this concert we wanted to do, open, open air crusade. We were supposed to start around 5 o'clock, I think, and around 4.30. For ah. so, yeah. <laughs> I didn't even think of rain. 2.5. Rain wanted to start. LED screen, equipment, speakers, everything will be upside down. That's a bad omen for the church we are going to start the next day. I said, Father, in the name of Jesus, <laughs> I had a sense of feeling that I should cancel the rain. Father, in the name of Jesus, we canceled the rain. Pam! And then we got up the stage and we said, till we finish, till the last person gets home. It was when the last person got home. Irene cat and dog. Some of you remember CWC some months ago. Ah. It was going to rain for the first time in Abuja. Bishop Abi was preaching. Ah. And the whole building was shaking. Every I said, ah. So which means this CGWC will struggle. I said, Father, in the name of Jesus. No rain. In fact, members were, workers were joking with me, Pastor, you are the one that shot air. Please, the heat is too much. Really? It, it rained after three days. We remembered. And we said, Father, <laughs> I know you. some of you don't believe such things. It's not today. The first program we're going to hold in Koza. The same thing happened. 1999 April. We're about to go for the program. Oh, I know people that are pastors today that gave their lives to Christ in that program. I know people that are leaders that gave their lives to Christ in that program. Are you following what I'm saying? Therefore, it's possible that this is where I'm going. For there to be rain at Gilmore and not come here. Spiritually, it's possible for you to experience a downpour and your neighbor is experiencing dryness. That's why you can't explain some things to your cousin. You can't explain some things to people. Say, ah, okay, so how, somebody asked me, say, how did you receive the calling? I said, ah, thinking about it, he's a billionaire. He met me in the office and said to me, my father was a pastor. How did God talk to you? Sincerely speaking, I couldn't explain to him. Because it was so natural. I've heard God many times. I said, ah, so it don't know mean that so people don't hear God. <laughs> because for him to have asked that question is something he has pondered upon. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, that thing that is a bot in your life ends today. Yeah. How many of you agree with me that today to end? Yeah. If you believe in shout a louder, Amen. There is an heaven, a space over your head. In 2 Chronicles 7, 7 verse 13, 2 Chronicles 7 verse 13, say, so when I shut up heaven and there's no rain, or when I command the locust to devour the land or send pestilence among the people, my people, 
If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven. And I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. But I want you to know that God can shut up heaven. God can shut up heaven. And things will begin to, things that everybody experiences will start happening. It can be a community. It can be a company. It can be a family. It can be an individual. In Matthew 3.16, Matthew 3.16, now I, I need to describe what happened to you. Everybody was coming to be baptized of John the Baptist. You know when you want to, I, I, I went to a Baptist church before. So when you want to be baptized, there, there will be a long queue, right? And they will start singing a song. On the last day, on the last day, only two believers will be, you are walking. And suddenly, John the Baptist saw Jesus on the queue. He says, excuse me. Spoke to one of the protocols. Go and call that man. And when he came, he said, sir, you are the person that they said, uh, I, I had said in my preaching, that I'm not worthy to, to, to tie your, your, your sander. I even want to come to you to baptize me with the Holy Ghost and with fire. How could you come to me for water baptism? It's for those who are sinning. This baptism is, on, is unto repentance. Jesus said, let it be so for now. Let it be so for now. That all righteousness may be fulfilled. I want to do things right. Permit it to be so. Allow it to be so. Now, everybody was coming. Now, when you are baptized, one thing will happen to you. Your clothes will be wet. After a while, if you had to walk, or you stayed under the fan, or you changed your clothes, your clothes will be dry. Some people, all that happened to them was that they were wet. But Jesus Christ got into Jordan and began to pray. I want to read verse 16 to you. The Bible says, when he had been baptized... He came up immediately from the water and behold, the heavens were opened not to everybody, to him. Not to everybody, to him. Come on, I don't even know where to face. I am telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, this is a concept you have to pay attention to. This is something you have to pay attention to. This is the reason why people struggle. There is a reason why it seems as if the devil is more powerful. What you need is no more deliverance. It's not deliverance checkup every month. What you need is not to go and see a prophet every time. What you need is not to go from church. After this church service, we'll go to a mountain to pray. I must pray. Things must happen. No. Sometimes you just need to adjust some things. You'll be shocked how everything will change for you. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, I prophesy that this service will be that service that everything will change for you. Yeah. When you hear the word and you are taught, you get them, pff, it's as if the word is already a she for you. <laughs> Could it be that you are operating under closed heaven? Could it be? When you are they are teaching things of God, one anger comes from your inside. The way you even talk on the internet, Later they will say, touch on them, anointed. Later they will say, who are the people that say, demons are your people? Are you part of them? He said, you have overcome them. Are you part of the them? There are some things you should pay attention to. There are some mindset truisms that you should know. <laughs> this thing that is happening here, I'm, I'm making myself an adversary of God. And friendship with the world is tantamount to declare enmity with God. I pray in the name of Jesus. The peace of God that makes everything calm down rest upon your life. Rest upon your life. Jesus Christ, our Lord, could not start ministry. We closed heaven. He had to wait till he was 33. For this, from age 12, he knew what he wanted to do. When others were, other children were playing with a wheel on the street with, with pants. He knew what he was supposed to do, but he waited for this age. And the heavens were open to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending, not a dove like. He just splashed. It's called position upon. 
is different from the indwelling. The position upon is, you know, the fruit of the tree is what makes the tree bless the neighborhood. It's not what it needs, it's not the nutrient that produces the fruit. But when the fruit, the fruit that it produces is a product of excess of life. The reason why Jesus Christ could command the deaf to hear. Oh, he wanted to heal a deaf person. You know what they said? A father opened and suddenly he opened. In fact, the disciples said, why could we not cast out the devil? What's happening? Why? Jesus said, lack of faith. Because you, you didn't know how to open the heavens. I pray in the name of Jesus. After this service, every struggle in your life has ceased. The devil will regret that you came here today. Yeah. If you believe it, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. A lot of people are experiencing dryness as a general occurrence. A lot of people are experiencing different things. But today, in the name of Jesus, there's a new beginning for you. Yeah. In Amos chapter 4 verse 7, Amos chapter 4 verse 7, I'll read two verses to you now. Then we'll come back to that, that chapter. The Bible says in Amos chapter 4 verse 7, I also withheld rain from you. Okay? When there was still three months to harvest, I made its rain on one city and without rain from another city. Did you hear that? So, I pray for you from my heart that in this service, there will be such an impact that you walk out with an open heavens. Yeah. You see that city? He said, I will take rain from another city. One part was rained upon, and where it did not rain, what happened? That part with that. That part with that. Hmm? You have seven brothers. All of them finished from school. No job. And the devil made it to believe that, no, we don't know anybody in this family. Seven people. You don't know anybody. And all of them are sitting at home. And it's happening to you too. That's why I said, if you're not the first in your family, you're not listening to what we're saying here. Because there are things we'll make you do here that will open your heavens. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, from today, your experiences will be different. Can your amen be louder? I told you to turn to me, Amos 7, Amos 4, verse 8 right now. So, Two or three cities wandered around. Migration. They wandered around to another city just to drink water. So people moved from Guagala to Abuja just to drink water and to go back. And they came to Abuja to fetch. And a fool is wondering, ah, there's something about Abuja. Abuja is blessed. Like something, ah, that brother has grace. The Bible says the grace of God has appeared to all men. Where were you when grace appeared? There's something you've embraced. There's something you're nurturing. There's something you're harboring that is sponsoring a closed heaven. My prayer today, and I'm talking to you even if you're a pastor. I'm talking to you even if you're a leader. I'm talking to that person that claims that I've been born again for so long. Your relationship with God for so long shouldn't make uh, uh, you, shouldn't make grace uh, elude your life. Pray in the name of Jesus. Anywhere you've been going to to get water, your life shall be out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Your life shall be soaked and wet in the name of Jesus. Dryness is not your portion anymore in the name of Jesus. You know what God said? He said, yet you have not returned to me. I did that to catch your attention. I did that to catch your attention. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, Heavens will not close over you. Amen. Heavens will not close over you. Amen. Disobedience causes things like that to happen. Sin, rebellion. We're going to talk about that in the course of this month. My prayer for you is that after this service, because that's the reason why I'm preaching to you, you will not experience any of that again in the name Amen. of Jesus. Demons like it. They operate with ease. When there's a closed heaven. If you're that type that is harboring unforgiveness, you, you, you talk about other people, 
you divide friends, those things they sponsor close to heavens. You belong to a church and you are fighting in the church. You don't even like the things. You don't promote the things that Jesus died for. You are there as a problem. Such things sponsor close heavens. Despite the fact that you now have Jesus Christ. And you're experiencing these things I've spoken about. I want you to take a forensic look at your life and just think about it. The devil is not that powerful. Maybe there are things I'm doing that creates a ladder for the enemy to operate in my life, to operate in my marriage, to operate in my business. I pray this morning because I'm not preaching to you so that you can get information. I'm preaching for impartation. I pray that any kind of ladder the enemy has created to gain access into our lives is broken today. Yeah. Is broken today. Yeah. Now, let me describe what I'm saying to you. When you don't have rain as a farmer, you sow a lot and reap little. Is that true? Is that true? <laughs> you work hard. People look at you and say, no, no, no. no. It's a hardworking person. I used to know a brother, very hardworking person. If he writes for you, oh my God. But when he's talking, I keep correcting him. No, don't have that mindset. Don't have this. He's always complaining. Do you know murmuring can destroy your life? <laughs> In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse, if you read from verse 10, Bible says to us in verse 10, 1 Corinthians 10 and verse 10. No complain. Please give me the amplified, um, the KJV. I want to see the word mama. No mama, neither mama ye. As some of them. In fact, if you read from verse 4, these things were written for our examples. Apostle Paul wrote this. The one to whom brought the doctrine of grace wrote this. Don't mama, don't complain. These things were written for our examples. In verse 10, the Bible says, do mama. As some of them also, and they were destroyed by the destroyer. Just murmuring. I kept telling the brother, don't do this. Don't say this. Don't do this. Until he destroyed himself. Very brilliant person. Loaded with potentials, but operating under close air. When he joined our church at the time, our church was the third church he joined. He would just tell me, oh, when I was in Lagos, and I was there, this bishop did this. I said, don't say that again. Don't complain again. He complains about his family, complains about his job, complains about everything around him. He's sponsoring demons to flourish around him. Very tiny things. You think, oh, yeah, I've been, I've been in Christ for so long. See, if you are telling me, it's because I can't see results in your life. There are things I will see, I will know that you've been in Christ for so long. When someone is under close heaven, the atmosphere is tensed. When it doesn't rain for a long time, you know, older people will even say, ah, it has not rained. Maybe it should rain home so that diseases spread easily when it doesn't rain. Things happen. You see little children, they begin to get hot when it doesn't rain. Atmosphere is tensed. When you come to church, the AC stops working at home in the car. <laughs> it stops working when it doesn't rain. Heat is much. Who can tell me what happens again? It becomes dusty. Everywhere is dusty. Everywhere is dusty. You clean, you go to work, you come back. Dusty. Everywhere is just dusty. You have a new site. You want to bring someone important to come and supervise the site or to pray on the site. What happens? You wet the site. You wet it to reduce the dust. Because dust will be plenty when there's no rain. I'm not talking about irrigation. There are a lot of, lot of Christians operating with irrigation system. I'm talking about rain. Because rain has some chemicals 
that when they fall, you no, know, I was talking to one of my sons in the Lord. His father couldn't breathe very well. And they took his father to the hospital. They couldn't see his artery because some things sat on the artery and made the artery disappear. They said, oh, they can do a flush until they ask for his age. And they said, for his age, he's over 70. They can't do the flush. He could die because the organs are maybe tired. What rain does? You, you see some plants. When it doesn't rain, maggots, termites, several things are on there. When it rains, they all fall down. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, let the rain of God rest upon you. Yeah. Can that even be louder? Yeah. Can you destroy every impact of the enemy in your life? Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. When it doesn't rain, what happens? You are easily dehydrated. There are a lot of Christians that are just tired. You put in so much little result. You preach and preach and preach. They preach to you, listen to tapes. It doesn't work. Why? Because there are things you have embraced around you that are dissipating the power of the word in your life. <laughs> when I was a student, when I pray, I feel God. I don't feel God anymore. There are things you've embraced. There are things you've allowed around you that is sponsoring the closed heaven. If you look at that Amos chapter 4 verse 7, I want to read again verse 7 and read to 11 this time around. I also withheld rain from you when there were still three months to the harvest. I made it rain in one, on one city and without rain from another city. One part, was, what, one part was rained upon and where it did not rain, what happened? The part, that part withered. So two or three cities wandered to another city to drink water. But they were not satisfied. You shall be satisfied. Amen. You shall be satisfied. Amen. Yet you have not returned to me, says the Lord. Look at verse 9, everybody. I'm going to 11. I blasted you with blight, with blight and with mildew. And when your gardens increase and your vineyards increase, your vineyards and your fig trees and your olive trees, the locusts devote them. They worked hard. They had vineyards, they had fig trees, they had, they had, they had gardens. The locusts devote them. Yet, you have not returned to me. Verse 10. I sent among you a plague after the man of Egypt. Your young man I killed with a sword. That will not be your portion. Amen. Along with the captive, horse, or captive horses, I made the stench of your camp come into your, your nostrils. Yet, you have not returned to me. Let's read verse 11 together. Ready, read. I overthrew. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Plucked from the body. Yet, you've not returned to me. The antidote is to return to God. Child of God, I'm telling you what you're dealing with right now. Quickly do what the Lord has put in your heart to do. Quickly do it. If you do it, you'll be surprised. How much the devil has no power. Because when there's closed heaven, it's very easy for demons to operate. In Isaiah 32, verse 13, I'm out of time, I need to run fast. Isaiah 32, verse 13. On the land of my people will come thorns and brass. Yet, yes, on all happy homes, in joyous cities. Naturally, they are happy homes. Naturally, they are talking about even families operating under close heaven. Verse 14. Because the palaces will what? Will be forsaken. The bustling cities will be what? Deserted. Talking about palaces, talking about families, talking about uh, uh, cities. The fort and the towers will become liars forever. A joy of wild donkeys, the pasture of flocks. Verse 15. Until, somebody say until. until. Come on, say until. until. And that time has come. I say that time has come. Yeah. I pray for everybody, even at the foyer, in every church that we have. In the name of Jesus, let the power of God begin to work on you. Yeah. Let the power of God, as I'm speaking right now, let the power of God begin to work on you. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. 
You see, when the devil is not disturbing you, huh? cry out for help. If you are disturbing him, he will react. Therefore, everyone that the devil has been disturbing, everyone that has been disturbing the enemy, and the enemy is reacting to, in the name of Jesus, I join my faith with yours. Let there be a turnaround. In the name of Jesus. Until the Spirit is poured upon us from on high. And the wilderness becomes what? A fruitful field. And the fruitful field is counted what? For a forest. Suddenly, things change. Things change. I prophesy in the name of Jesus. You know the devil wants you to be in bondage to him. He's not afraid of you going to church. He wants you to hear the word and just go back to reset. But this month is the month where things will change. Things will change. Every dryness I command it to be out of your way. Every dryness I command it to be out of your way. In Deuteronomy 28, 12, Deuteronomy 28, 12, I'm not going to even rush this. I have an entire month to do, deal with this. The Bible said the Lord will open to you his good treasure. <laughs> How are we going to do it? It will open to you his good treasure. The heavens. What I mean is that the heavens. To give rain to your land. Therefore I command that thing that represents your land. Whether family, whether a company or ministry, I don't know what it is, that have experienced dryness, let the Lord give rain to it right now. Yeah. Bible says to give rain to your land in its season. I prophesy that season has come. Yeah. Oh, you didn't hear me. I said that season has come. Yeah. The Bible says, and to bless all the work of your hand. Now, listen to me, everybody. Go and read it when you get home. Genesis 3. When Adam sinned against God, God couldn't curse Adam because he blessed Adam already. You know what he said? He said the ground, when you sow into the ground, the ground shall bring tons and thistles. The ground shall bring tons and thistles. He crushed the walk of his hand. When you want to touch a man, touch his walk. The devil knows that. So for everyone that is here, you've had something called promise and fail. Or last year was better than this year. I command it to be out of your life right now. Shout, shout a threefold day, maybe you believe it. Sit down. The Lord will open to you his good treasure, the heavens, to give rain to your land in its season. And to bless all, all, all the work of your hand. You shall lend to many nations. But you shall not borrow. Therefore I speak to that person who in multiple people. I command because that's not your portion. I command for your heaven to open. The brass on the ground should be soaking wet. In the name of Jesus. If you look at verse 14, verse 14... Oh, what a prophetic service. So you shall not turn aside from any of the words which I command you this day to the right or to the left or go after other gods of seven. Maybe you still love church. You like the atmosphere. But you have one Baba in your village. You have one cross that is upside down. You have something, uh, water that has leaves on it. You have, you, you, you have the concept that heaven helps us in themselves. When you go into apostasy, you say, you see, Pastor Biodun is a good teacher. He doesn't know what I'm going through. His Baba knows what I'm going through. Don't complicate your life. What you're going through is a short ever. Don't say, oh, I don't know what's happening to you. I know what's happening to you. What you are going through as a born again Christian is that you have put your hands on things that shot the heaven over you. But this morning, because God will never bring a word to you without a solution. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, as you yield, Abraham did not stop Isaac. He lifted up the knife. God said, it's okay. As you yield in your heart, 
that from today you want things to be different. Everything will change for you. Your health will change for you. Your finance will change for you. I gave someone a car not too long ago. The person didn't know how to drive. That tells me that person was the first person to own a car in, in, in the family. I pray in the name of Jesus, you shall be the head and not the tail. You'll be the first. God will take you out like this. He will take you out of the ash and set you among princes. I command in the name of Jesus, your experiences shall be different. God will help you. God will help you. If you believe it, shout amen like fire. In Leviticus 26 verse 4. Leviticus 26 verse 4. Then I will give. I will give you rain. When? In a season. Tap your neighbor say, the season has come. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. If you believe, shout it higher. I say, the season has come. The land shall yield. What? It's produce. The trees of the field shall yield their fruit. Never again will you suffer barrenness. Never again will you experience dryness. In the name of Jesus. In Isaiah 44, I'm trying to rush because of time. Isaiah 44. Today I just want to prophesy about you. Um, from Tuesday, I will begin to break it down. In Isaiah 44, from verse 1. Isaiah 44, from verse 1. Yet, hear me now. O Jacob, my servant, and Israel, whom I have chosen. Thus says the Lord, who made you and formed you from the womb. So, Jacob was made, Israel was, was transformed. Who will help you? So look at your neighbor and say, God will help you. <laughs> Do you know nobody knows the beginning of what you're dealing with? God knows. Some of them you inherited. God knows. God knows. Tap your neighbor and say, God will help you. Say, fear not, O Jacob, my servant, and you, Jeshurun, whom I have chosen. Verse 3. For what I will, why will I help you? For I will pour water on him who is thirsty. You've been thirsty all your life. You've been dry. The enemy thought by this, nobody will escape from this family. But God will pour water upon you. And guess what? I floods on the dry ground. Not just ordinary water. Flood. You know the meaning of flood? The ground took and took and took. The gutters took. No, no room again to contain it. I pray in the name of Jesus. Receive the flood of God's blessing. God says, what am I saying? Don't think I'm talking about physical rain. I will pour my spirits even on your descendant. In other words, what will happen to you? You will start a new lineage. You will start a new lineage. All things will pass away. Behold, new things will start happening. If you believe it, shout amen somebody. I will pour my spirit on your descendants and my blessings on your offspring. Therefore, what will come out of your body? The lineage you will start will be different from where you're coming from. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Nothing can make you cry like what happened to your father when he was 50 happening to you. What happened to your mother when she was 45 happening to you. Do you know how excited I am? On Saturday, last Saturday, when my mom was giving thanks and she said, my mom died at 64. I knew her. My dad, my dad died at 40, maybe 45. I never met him. But she was 80. Your case will be different. And the MC said, Mommy, are you really 80? He said, my younger brother is there. He was 78. People that parent, their parents did not get to that age. I pray for you. I know medical, medical science will tell you what happened to your father, what happened to your mother, how did they die? Because naturally that should happen to you. But I prophesy you will start a new lineage. If you believe it, shout him in three times. In verse 5, verse 5, Isaiah 44, verse 5. 
Let's go to verse. Uh, let's go to uh, verse four again. Isaiah 40, 44, verse four. They will spring up among the grass like willows. Confess this every day. By the water courses, not by the dry places. By the water courses. <laughs> you know what? The, one of the causes of the Bible is that that person who is an enemy will become a grass that grew on the rooftop before they flourish. God will cut them off. But this one will spring up like grass, like willows by the water courses. In verse 5, the Bible says, I am the Lord. One will say, I'm the Lord. Another will call himself by the name of Jacob. Another one will write with his hands, the Lord. The name himself, and name himself by the name of Israel. That will be your portion. It doesn't matter where you came from, your experience will be different. Amen. I say your experience will be different. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. there shall be showers of blessings. Amen. There shall be showers of blessings. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. there shall be showers of blessings. Amen. I prophesy to you, from today, every closed door opens for you. The God that made, the, made a way in the middle of the sea. That's my revelation this season. The God that made a way in the middle of the sea shall make a way for you. Amen. You'll be fresh and flourishing. Amen. God will help you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. God will help you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Your heaven will open over you. Amen. Things will be easier for you. Amen. So shall it be. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now, if you're not born again, because I'm out of time, I need to quickly invite you. If you're not born again, you will encounter a closed heaven. There's some things in your life you didn't know at the beginning. What happened to your grandfather? What happened to your great-grandfather? When you become, whoever is one with Christ is one spirit. When you become born again, what happens to you is that in the spirit, the enemy can touch you again. Now you say to me, Pastor Biodo, there are a lot of people that are born again that I know, even in this church. Why were you preaching close heaven to those who are born again and you are inviting me to receive Jesus Christ? It's because people do things that short there. You can grieve the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit can be in your life. He's, he's in your life to abide forever, but you can turn. And those are the things that will be showing you this month. You remember the Bible says, if I will preempt one of the sessions, in Malachi 3 verse 10, it says if you pay time, I will open the windows of heaven. <laughs> you will never see dryness. There are some things. When you see somebody stand like this when they're praising God, <laughs> you don't understand what it is. God is fearful. In praise. He cannot even tell what he will do when you praise him. The only thing, the only person that demands worship is the spirit. That was why, we, go and read the temptation of Jesus Christ. When the devil was speaking to him, he thought it was his mind. When the spirit told him, bow to me, then he said, get thee behind me, Satan. He knew who was talking to him because he knew it's only spirits that demand worship. You are made to worship God. They should not force you. Somebody should not come here and sing the song you just learnt or, or, or wind you to praise God because you were made to be the replacement for Lucifer who was a worshiper. God is fearful in praises. Now, if you're here, you're not born again, I want to invite you to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Listen to me. I am telling you, even your look, your appearance will change. I just came back from Elori where I grew up and I saw people I grew up with. And I, it dawned on me again that if you're in Christ and you do what Christ, you, you embrace his principles, covenant will take you out. It will take you, it will take a solitary and set him in families. God wants to change your life. Maybe you came to church today not thinking you give your life to Christ. Let me just attend you. They said, Koza is a church where there's good music. Let me just go there. 
the pastor talks well. Let me just go there and see his swag. He's a Gucci pastor. Let me just, let me just, let me just see him. Maybe that's why you're here this morning. But God has another plan for you. Newsflash, the devil is no more powerful than God. When you submit to God, James 4, 7. James 4, 7. It says, submit first of all to God. Resist the devil. Don't start from resisting. We all want to resist the devil. We want to resist poverty. We want to resist sickness. But if you don't submit to God, you can't resist. Did you notice what I noticed? Resist the devil and it will flee from you, not from God. When you submit to God, you become one with God. Life has to change for you. So you are here this morning. You want to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Very quickly, we don't have time. We, today is our prayer service. I want you to come out and join me here. Very quickly. Don't wait for the first person. You might be the only one, the only person. Just come. Take that bold step. Come. You're not a man because you have muscles. You are a man because you know what to do and you want to do it. Come. Let's stand here. Yes, Jesus. Sing it again. A lot of us are used to people whining us and encouraging us to receive Jesus Christ. We don't have time this morning. So I'm going to ask them to sing one more song and we'll sing it one more time. If you want to join us, come. Don't deny Jesus. Don't be a big, problem, a big boy having big problems. Take that bold step and come. Bible says, whoever thirsts should come. It pours water on those who are thirsty. If you are thirsty, come. Sing one more song. Come. Encourage your neighbor to come. Are you coming? Now look at me, everybody. Please stop what you're writing. Look at me. Now, people, give, people come out to give their life to Christ all the time. Coming out is good. It's a display of your faith. It's because you believe. But there's one more thing you need to do. And I want to encourage everybody to do it with you. You need to confess with your mouth. Romans 10 and verse 10 says, With heart you believe unto righteousness. With mouth you confess unto salvation. You just did half of what can get you saved right now by coming out. There is no power in me that can help you to become who you're supposed to be if you keep your mouth shut. It's not a long thing, it's a very short thing. Just call Jesus Lord and you'll be saved. That's what the Bible says. If you do it, a process will start that will change your life forever. The devil knows this. Demons know this. Now that you're out, he still wants to make you not to see anything. So you're forming a big boy or a big girl. So I'm out. Why did I even come out? How will I sustain the life? I hate living a lie. My life. Me. My life. Mm -mm, don't do like that. That's pride. Just say it. Once from your heart you say it. If you, don't, if you say it and it's not from your heart, it won't work. Okay? Let's join them. Everybody. Say after me, Father, in the name of Jesus. I heard your word. And I believed your word. Today, I confess Jesus as my Lord and as my Savior. Today, I receive into my life the gift of eternal life. From today, Holy Spirit, 
come into my life, reside in my life, make everything hard, easy for me. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name. Pastor Biodo, is it that simple? Yes, very simple. The devil knows, demons know, they can't touch you. If you send it from your heart, and believe in your heart.